السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سعادة الأخ الفاضل السيد علي بن أحمد أحمد بن سلمان المسلم رئيس مجلس النواب وسعادة الأستاذ الدكتور عبد الله بن يوسف الحواج الرئيس المؤسس رئيس مجلس أمناء الجامعة الأهلية السادة الحضور السادة السفراء السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته سوف أتحدث في كلمتي باللغة الإنجليزية وذلك نظرا لتواجد معنا أونلاين ما يقارب من 200 استاذ ودكتور وباحث من من جميع ارجاء العالم من 22 دوله فاسمحوا لي ان القي كلمتي باللغه الانجليزيه Good morning to you all from beautiful Bahrain this beautiful island in the middle of the Arabian Gulf Your Excellency Ahmed bin Salman Al Musallam Chair of the House of Representatives, we are honored to have you as a patron to this event, and you have honored us with your presence. Thank you. Professor Abdullah, partners, Brunel University, we are honored to have this long established relationship with Brunel University, primarily in the PhD program, which has now, yesterday, we run the 15th annual research PhD symposium, which is really an achievement for Bahrain and this, for this partnership. And we have three professors here present from Brunel University. We are also honored to be partners with UTB, University of Technology and Business in Jeddah. And we have some representatives here with us. As I said yesterday, we run the 15th PhD Symposium. And today, we run the seventh Equal Opportunities Conference. This conference, which started from humble beginnings, from simple presentations from different organizations and ministries throughout Bahrain, it has clear, uh, created an awareness of the importance of equal opportunity of gender issues, of women empowerment, of the rights to orphans, special needs, etc. This is real human rights in action. Now, today we celebrate, as Professor Abdullah said, the presentation in parallel sessions of about 160 papers touching on a wide spectrum of themes, all related to humanity and human development, all related to human rights and issues. And I really want to seize or take this opportunity today to thank Her Royal Highness, Sheikha Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the First Lady and the President of the Supreme Council of Women for her drive to achieve women empowerment and women enablement. Throughout the past years, women in Bahrain have received more rights. They had rights, but they have received more rights. They are everywhere. They are into everything. There is no restriction on women, from being members of the parliament to being ministers. This is Bahrain. Bahrain is really empower, has empowered women. So all the uh, appreciation and respect for her. Now, somebody might ask why Ahliya runs such conferences. I want to tell you that now we are running a number of international conferences in a wide range of areas, from AI to economy to a number of conferences. I also want to inform you that all these conferences, the research papers published in them are published in proceedings and journal papers and of international standard. They're also all scopus level. So they are quality papers. 
And I'm also happy to inform you that Ahliya University has the highest cited researcher in the Arab world. And we have three of the, our researchers who are in the top 2% according to the ranking by Stanford University. It's a drive for us. It's a mission to serve. And we focus our research to serve Bahrain and our community. This is the role of our, our community engagement, to serve Bahrain and our community. In the same directions, Ahliya has, in the last year and a half, opened nine new programs at the BSc and MSc levels, all programs, modern programs, created especially for the current and future job markets. So we have the BSc in physiotherapy, the BSc in nutrition, they're online, they're on. We have masters in financial technology, a master in forensic accounting, a master in internet of things, and a master in sustainable interior design. All prepared and built to help in the job market and create job opportunities. Now I will go back to research. Ahliya now has achieved a level where we can enter times higher education ranking because the minimum number of publications required is a thousand. We have passed the thousand mark. So that's a big achievement for Bahrain and for Ahliya. Now, I want to emphasize why we focus on research and why research is so vital. If you look closely, research is the backbone of progress. It is through research that countries develop. That's why countries give a large budget for research. Now, if you look, we have the South Korean ambassador here. I think South Korea is the largest, is the largest, if I can say, country which gives a percentage of its gross domestic product to funding research. So we need some kind of a national research budget to help fund research projects to serve Bahrain. And here I want to guide you or direct you to a couple of places to look at. Namely, I will mention one. Go and look at this JR site, the Scientific Journal Research site, which will show you once every six months all the research published by countries, the ranking of countries in terms of research, and in terms of every area and every field, you take nanotechnology, energy, everything, you will find it's there. And you'll find the ranking of all nations. And I think it is high time for the Arab countries to think seriously about setting up research budgets to fund research and help their people solve their own problems. And here I want to allude to what Professor Abdullah said. It is okay to be a consumer and a consumer of knowledge and things. But it's important that you participate in producing this knowledge. And that we will only do if we think seriously about funding research. I want, uh, again, I would maybe to conclude, I will again follow up on what Professor Abdullah Hawaj mentioned about AI, artificial intelligence. This newborn, which nobody knows what it's going to look like, nobody knows how it's going to materialize, it is going to touch all our lives. The term I always use and repeat that AI in our lives will be like the tea in the milk. They are, you cannot separate them. It's going to touch on our lives in terms of children, adults, everybody. And that brings يعني, خير و شر. It will bring wealth to humanity. It will also bring risks and dangers. And that's, I remember the first conference was conducted in London 
the first conference to actually put down regulations and rules for dealing with AI. Now, I want to say something here as well. Just like you give license for a company who produces drugs, medicines, I think it is high time, it is high time that countries and the United Nations think seriously of enabling countries to give license for producers of certain types of software because they can affect children and many other people. So it is high time to think of legislation. And since the Council of Representatives are here, it might be uh, a way of thinking ahead. AI will impact our economy, our culture, our education, and everything else. It will affect our future generations, and it's a, a serious issue. I want to conclude, I want to conclude by thanking you all for your presence, thanking our patron, and uh, wishing you a happy and progressive conference, and inshallah, many happy returns. Thank you very much. Thank you.